So, today is a windy Wednesday and I'm cooking fish outside by the fire. Snow hasn't arrived yet in Tasiak. Snowed a little bit, there's a dusting on the ground but it melted and so we're waiting for more. More might be coming today anyway. So I know I haven't made one of these story videos in a while. I wanted to do another one today. This one is about uh, Kasasuk, which is a Greenlandic legend, but it's also um, been told all across the Inuit world, sometimes with different names for the main characters. But it's the story of the orphan boy. I'll stick to the Greenlandic name Kasasuk, who uh, was mistreated was mistreated and then took his revenge. Ah! <laughs> I almost fell. <laughs> anyway. So the story goes that there was an orphan boy named Kasasuk who was adopted to some very mean people who took the role of his so-called parents. They made him sleep in the porch of the igloo. They made him eat with the dogs, and whenever he did anything, anything that deserved scolding, they would pick him up by the nostrils. Woo! Smoke from the eyes. <laughs> They'd pick Kasasuk up by the nostrils and bring him, pull him up, pull him up and drag him by the nostrils. So he was horribly mistreated cast aside and the whole village mistreated him too, it wasn't just the family. His only friend was the older brother. He had an adopted older brother who treated him well, who gave him some food when the parents were not looking, and so on and so forth. Until one day, or one night rather, it's gonna be burned. Until one night, as Kasasuk snuck out to the entrance to the igloo to get a bit of meat that his brother had saved for him, he was called by a mysterious creature. So he went out, he went out walking to find this mysterious creature. He said, come here, come here, come here, Kasasuk. And so the identity of this creature depends on the version of the stories. There's lots of different versions of this story that are, that are told in different parts of the world. Some say that it's a giant. Some, call, some say that it's um, the spirit of the, of, the, of the cosmos. But in any case, a very powerful being calls him away and calls him to go up to a mountain. And there, while he's up on the mountain, this spirit trains him, trains him through beatings, beating to strengthen the body, strengthen him, strengthen himself, one after another after another, and so he grows. Little Kasasuk, Kasasuk was a little boy, little orphan boy, he grows and becomes a giant. And he says, the creature, the Silaupinua, or the polar bear, or the giant, or the Whatever the creature is, according to the version, says, now you're ready. Now you're trained. Now you've reached your potential. Now you've reached your destiny. Now go back home. So he goes back home. And what does he do when he goes back home? He takes his revenge. He calls three polar bears and sends them into the village. One after another after another. People go to fight the bears, but these are tremendous bears. Horrible bears and they eat them. They eat all the people who are sent to go get them. Then, giant Kastasuk now appears and people in the village say, was that you? You've been gone so long. And he says, silence. And he picks them up and tosses them to the bears. One person after another, after another, get tossed to the bears, eaten by the bears. Awful, hungry polar bears. 
They don't eat fish like I'm eating, they're eating people. Then there are people who are like, who, who come and say, no, but we were always nice to you, we always shared our toys with you, we always gave you some meat. And he says, silence, that's not true, and he sh throws them all to the bears. And so now, now we reach the end of the story, and this is where different versions differ according to the time period, and according to what the storytellers want to convey every time. That's about done. In any case, The original version has him just taking murderous revenge on everybody and he's only satisfied when two people, when there are two women who he takes as his wives, who treated him moderately well in the past and then he sort of goes off and lives with them in a semi-contented state while everyone else is dead. Other versions have him go and stand up and say that he's ready to take his revenge but then stand down when a peace, when a truce is made. These are versions of the story that are told in Greenland after Christianity took forth, um, took hold, and they wanted to subdue the idea about revenge. Others have him go on an even more radical, murderous rampage to neighboring villages and eventually get killed by um, by people teaming up against him. Hundreds of people teaming up against him to finally destroy him. That's one version of it. And another version of it has this idea about, well, there you have it. That's what happens when you treat an orphan badly. That's what happens when you treat someone who's underprivileged badly. And so, uh, yes, he's destroying us. He's ready to destroy us, but best not to go after him because that's only going to continue the cycle of violence and so on and so forth. So it's a story that has the same basic uh, origin. The, the guy gets mistreated, he takes his revenge, he's ready to destroy everything. But according to the period, the time period, and what the culture at the time wanted to convey, the ending differs. <coughs> so how would that, what, what's Kasasuk, who is Kasasuk today? I don't know, this is, thinking about some stuff um, that I mentioned before back in the springtime but maybe Kasasuk who's taking his revenge is kind of kind of nature kind of what the planet is doing right now because for a long time in many Many cultures, well, ruling cultures, um, modern cultures, there's the idea that nature is something that has to be um, exploited, used for resources, or at the very least protected as if it were a small child. As if nature were a small child. That's the idea behind some of the, some environmentalists like protecting, like humans have this duty to protect. But if you treat the planet like a child, if you treat nature like a child, its true self is going to be revealed. If you pull at someone's nostrils, the idea is that it's opening their airways, there's going to be big breath. And big breath is very inspiring. Breath is inspiration, but it's also dangerous. Like today's a really windy day, and big breath with this with this fire could be dangerous. We nearly burnt my fish here. Uh, so I think we're seeing the return of Kasasuk, who we mistreated, who's coming at us with big breath. We pulled at its nostrils too long and we treated it like a child win, whereas we're all dependent on this. Silau Inua. The spirit of the cosmos is all around us and so we're not, we're very deluded to think that we were able to cast it aside. 
little Casa Suk is inspired by the spirit of the cosmos. And when he becomes big, or when he becomes his true form, rather, he can choose what to do with it. And we, we, the villagers, are the very small ones then. Anyway, that's, what, that's my take on Kastasuk, the orphan boy. I'm going to eat my fish now. Have a good Wednesday, and see you later. <laughs>